This is One on One. We're at the uh, Seton Hall Hackensack Meridian School of Medicine, scheduled to open in July of 2018. I'm Steve Adubato. We're talking to researchers, scientists, uh, clinical professionals, folks who are part of this extraordinary operation that's going to have an impact, not just in New Jersey and the region, but in the nation. We're talking to Dr. Robert Korngold, who is, in fact, the chairman of the research department at Hackensack University Medical Center. Doctor, let me ask you. We're here in this lobby. It is uh, um, a little ways away from the opening. What do you believe the School of Medicine will mean? Well, for, for research, it, it gives us a great opportunity to, uh, to develop our research program uh, for Hackensack Meridian uh, in collaboration with the medical school. <clears throat> and uh, we're, we're planning on, on really uh, forging ahead and developing uh, three major institutes uh, here on, on the campus of the medical school. Uh, the, the first will be regenerative medicine. Uh, the second would be uh, related to host defense uh, against disease that involves immunology, infectious disease, and cancer uh, research. And the third will be uh, an institute devoted for multiple myeloma research. And these are all uh, intended to be very translational. That is that- What does it mean, translational? Well, researchers take their discoveries from basic science uh, and are at the stage where they want to uh, move that into the clinic so that it benefits uh, patients uh, as soon as possible. And obviously that involves working very closely with the uh, clinicians uh, to, to develop the clinical trials uh, around these discoveries. And uh, it, it, it's a difficult part of uh, research and science, but this is where we want to focus. Doctor, let me ask you this. You have said that innovation will in fact drive medicine for the foreseeable future. What do you mean by that? Well, we, we know that's uh, an absolute fact. So all the technology uh, advances uh, recently in uh, genetic sequencing and, and, and understanding how disease develops and understanding uh, many different ways of, of analyzing disease uh, allows uh, physicians to really uh, develop personalized medicine for their patients. That is to really get to the finite cause of what's going on in that, in that individual patient and that helps them cater to different approaches that, that treat that patient. And obviously, we we're looking for better outcomes. One of the things that's so interesting, uh, whether it's this particular school of medicine or, or schools of medicine across the nation, is that um, there are some folks that say that there needs to be a new paradigm, a new way of teaching uh, students who are going into medicine. So I ask you, the role of research as it relates to the new curriculum to teach the physicians of the future Describe that. Well, so we would like to see uh, all our medical students uh, of the future uh, to understand clinical research of how to develop a clinical protocol. How do you actually do that? Well, so you, you, you do that by example. Uh, so th we would pair them up with uh, physicians that are very active, uh, research science, uh, scientists, physicians uh, that do this all the time. And it, 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 is, uh, it requires finesse, it requires skills that... Mentoring. Mentoring that uh, need to be developed. Uh, it also requires understanding all the uh, regulatory issues that, that are involved in, in conducting a clinical trial. Uh, but without that basic uh, you know, experience, it's very daunting for any physician to, to start a clinical trial on their own. So it's, we, we want them to come out into the world uh, having this skill, being able to really develop uh, investigator-initiated trials that they, they want to do for their, their own patients. Doctor, you talked about clinical trials. I mean, people hear the term clinical trials all the time watching us right now, and uh, people who are interested and concerned about clinical trials because they want to see positive results for themselves, for their family members and loved ones who are struggling and suffering, um, and want to see findings, research findings that are positive. What could what we're talking about right now mean in terms of of changes as it relates to clinical trials and how they're conducted? Well, it's, it, it, it gives the opportunity for more clinical trials. Uh, clinical trials are, are the way to test new, new developments, new approaches, new drugs. Uh, without them, you can't move forward, and you can't move it into the, the open market for, for all patients. Will they take place here? Uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, absolutely. They, they take place here at, hack, at the hospital uh, system. Uh, we, we have a huge clinical service that, that can enable enough patients to be enrolled in clinical trials. Uh, of course, enrollment is key. Uh, but this gives us an opportunity to do this locally. The kinds of students that you will be recruiting, 
I'm wondering, given what you're describing now, does the recruit, and we'll talk to the dean as well of the School of Medicine, do you recruit different kinds of students? Do you look for different kinds of students because you're going to need different types of physicians who have some of the same skills, but you're talking about some additional skills? Right. I mean, the, the dean may have her own opinion on this. Uh, I'm, I'm biased on the research side. Uh, I would like to see students that, that have a background in, in some research already so that they, they have an interest in, in moving forward uh, whenever they have the available time to, to take part in, in participating in lab research if they can, if they have that time, uh, or certainly associate with the clinical groups to develop clinical research. Classroom learning, not nearly enough. Well, cl classroom learning is changing. I mean, the, the whole what do you mean by that? The, the whole curriculum uh, at the medical school, as as the dean can uh, of course tell you, uh, is going to be problem based, uh, team learning. So it's it's not going to be lectures uh, so much anymore. It's going to be working together as a group to the, to solve the problems of the patient. It's interesting. I know this is going to be a challenging question in a lot of ways, but what about for all the physicians who were trained based on the different medical school paradigm or model, how do they adapt to the kinds of physicians who will be coming out of places like this, trained differently? Well, I, I don't think that that's an issue. I, I mean, obviously they're in their practice already. They, they know what they're doing. Uh, it, it just allows new skills perhaps uh, for, for the new students to, to go into the field and really approach problems and, and disease in a different way and approach their patients. Uh, obviously, the intent is to help their patients and improve outcomes. So they, they may be thinking about things more. Uh, they, they may be looking for solutions that may not, not be obvious to, to other people. Finally, how optimistic are you about the future, not just of medical education, but frankly, more importantly, what it means to patients in this uh, region and this nation? Oh, I mean, this is a very exciting time. As I said, all the technology that, that's available, uh, we, we have to incorporate that to, to really mean something for the patients. And that, that's where the challenge is, trying to translate that, trying to, to get into to new approaches, new ways of thinking about disease, and new ways of trying to cure them. Thank you, Doctor. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Investors Bank, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Johnson & Johnson, New Jersey Resources, New Jersey Sharing Network, Fedway Associates, and by Gary's Wine and Marketplace. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.